Hello everybody and welcome back to Wapleville. I think I got something fun for you here. This is from Big Child Creatives and it's been a little while since I did a bust outside of say the Blackheart Models busts and I think this could be fun for some dual light sources and I was thinking maybe uh, kind of a firelight maybe from over here something like a moonlight from this angle. Now I don't know exactly what we're going to do metal wise here, maybe gold trim with regular metal here, or maybe some kind of a, a metal that has a color to it, like over here. Now I do have some reference photos over here. You can see on the other side over here, that's mostly just a gold type of a thing. Here you got that sort of mix. You've got some steel color armor, some gold, some even red metal might be interesting to try something like that again with two different light sources thinking more of a moonlight this way and then more of a firelight this way now we do have our fluorescent orange out here and this is from Marion Street we'll be going over all this stuff later on we do have a new color here that we just tried out was it last night well actually earlier today as we welcome in our intrepid moderator, Armored Wolf, and we welcome in Bill Robertson. How are you doing? Yeah, we were. someone asked about Damascus Steel, and, and I thought of this, thinking, oh, yeah, it'd be great. And then I went, oh, yeah, it's in a scabbard, so we can maybe do some freehand on that. I don't know about freehand down here. Maybe, maybe not. But I just thought of maybe some object source lighting, just some firelight coming this way, moonlight coming this way. Hey, we got Lumberjack. Tim, how are you doing? Now, this is from Williamsburg. Here we go. I, I experimented with a few few different colors here. This one, we've used it a couple of times. It seems to be sort of handy. Where's the one we were working on last night? So this is something we were working on last night. And I think you can see some of this color in, well, several different areas here. Oh, just trying to, just trying to have some fun with this bust here tonight, Lumberjack Tim. I just, uh, and well, now this color here, this turned out to be a colossal disappointment. This thing, I even tried mixing it with other colors. Uh, I might use this for terrain. Outside of that, I might use this for mixing like mud or flunk or something like that. But as far as painting goes, this is. Uh, very expensive garbage right here unfortunately <laughs> it, it is what it is it kind of happens now not all colors are terrible just well we got ourselves a big tube of egyptian violet our favorite purple as we welcome in grim guard studios now let's clean up my painting room playing around with the oils and then bam well it's because oils are everywhere i mean the oils knew these guys knew that you were working with the oils they knew that's what's over here on the palette. Kind of make the rounds here. We got our titanium white. This is that new sort of a lemon yellow color. Yellow ochre. This is one of our faux cadmiums. This is also from Williamsburg right here. Then we've got our, this is genuine cadmium right here. That's not faux cadmium. That's the real deal. Touch of Terra Rosa. We've got our Fanchion Red. There's your fluorescent orange. Now, this is one of your newer colors here. This is from Gamlin. Where did you go? You're sitting around here somewhere. It's one, ah, uh, is this it? Uh, no, not ivory black, not Van Dyke brown. It's some kind of a Carmine. Oh, no, it's, it's a Williamsburg color. That's right. It's one of the Williamsburgs. Uh-oh. Gift sub time. Look at this. We're going to have to dance. He's going to catch it. Because he says, there's nobody around. Nobody can stop me. And she says, and he goes, oh, oh well, he gone. Oh, let's see. So nobody, uh, oh, there's a, there's a, I got an emote thanks to Armored Wolf's gift sub. Well, that, that's kind of cool. Here it is. Basically, in a, sort of an alizarin crimson right here. So, we'll try that. Now, as much as I enjoy that uh, teal color over here, I don't know with the dual light sources. I'm thinking maybe something more on the darker side. Maybe even something that's purple. Why not? We got purple. Why not play with that? 
So I'm thinking if this is going to be more of a gold trim and this is more of a bluish metal, we also have to think color of the hair. If we just go with the darker hair, indigo, Van Dyke brown, whatever, then our lights are going to have an interesting impact. I'm also thinking as far as our moonlight goes, these two right here. Oh, we've got Spectrum 75 in the house too. Uh, let's see. Now he's got an oil green earth. Not what I was hoping was that, where'd that thing go? That I just kind of chucked away. I was hoping that this was going to be like the MIG ammo field green. At all, it was not. It was basically supposed to be the green version of Terra Rosa. But it, uh, yeah, that didn't work out so well. So that one goes away. <laughs> I'm going to move some of this stuff off to the side here. Just get it out of the way like we do. And we got pun expected in the house as well. Now we do have a cobalt blue over here. We have a, that's an actual cadmium green. We've got ourselves a permanent green. That's part of that Windsor Newton starter set. And here's our Egyptian violet. So I'm thinking some purple. Yeah, I think a purple in here. Ivory black, indigo, a burnt umber, Payne's gray up there. So let maybe let's do some let's do some of our little pre-glaze kind of stuff, shall we? So how are you doing, Pond Expected? And let's see, do 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 Spectra. I think we've got everybody. Let's get a let's get a move on here. Skin so color. Now Lumberjack Tim did the subscribe thing. We'll give him one quick happy dance before she chases him off. She says, "Uh uh, this here is all about me." You didn't think you would get Kabuki Theater in a painting demo, but you will. So straight away, we're not going to fool around too much with these underside. They're just going to get some stuff in here. I mean, stuff. Use a little indigo mixed with that umber. Does it really matter? It's not that important. I, I was actually going to look up some references on sort of the Kabuki theater, sort of that, that the, the mask, the face painting that they do. And I thought, well, eh, it would be kind of fun to just have some skin tones on something that's a little bit bigger. Uh, let me see. Better late than never. Uh, I have to say, I'm super glad to find your stream. Took a dive into oils and loving it. Well, I am glad, pun expected, because it, it really is, it's meant to just be, oh, what would you say? kind of a nice relaxing medium where you don't necessarily have to stress a lot about it where you can take your time not really have to go oh man I got seconds to work with this better do it right now at least that's how it is for me it is so so darn mellow uh, we got Al Capone in the house too so how are you doing tonight yeah, this should be this should be very fun. Actually, I've been looking forward to this one for many many months. I'm glad that I saved it actually because well, I think I have another one anyways. So we could do another one of these in an entirely different scheme, which would also be fun. I think you can see we're not doing this quite so runny either. That is something that I just. I'm noticing more now that that pre-glaze is, well, there's a little less glaze to it. It's not quite as thin as it has been in the past, especially in sort of under areas like this right here. So, uh, yeah, I'll just get some more paint down in here. I have to be a little bit delicate with this application as far as just banging this around because all it's holding it is this little pin right here so if I'm a little too rough with it it'll just come right off that pin and we'll have a heck of a time working with this so I think our hair is taken care of for the most part so this process might be a little bit slower than what you're used to now we're gonna get some purple into this of course right here 
we want some of that to get into where gold is going to be, I'm thinking, because, hey, purple and gold, they go together. Now we have Bethany in here. How are you doing? Uh, the unexpected has been able to get things done so much quicker and being able to erase mistakes. Is that not the sweetest thing? You just say, ah, well, yeah, that didn't work. You didn't spend that long in the first place, and then getting rid of it is pretty darn easy. A little a little help from Mr. Sponge, and all the bad times go away. Hey, Ecto is in the house, too, is in the middle of making bottles right now. The Indian Yellow, you know, that's a color that every time I'm either in, well, say, Windsor Newton, or in the like the Williamsburg, Gamlin, whatever, that is one that I keep looking at. Matt, that might be one that you see at some point, because I think it could be fun. You'll have to let me know how you like that, because then, then that might be a, <laughs> a quicker path to seeing it here on the, on the stream and in the videos. I gotta figure out what's... Okay, so that is still that's still part of her outfit right there. Get, looking to get some of this purple into some of the golds here. I mean, a lot of this is going to be wiped away anyways, so what's the big deal? Uh, let's see, Bill says also a little hope from Mr. Bourbon helps with those bad times too. Well, oh geez, yeah, but I, I sh I've... Geez, I should have just sent you a special message or something like that to say, hey, alert, you might like this. This could be of special interest for you. Hmm. Ah, you know what? I might, for the heck of it, go with some purple here too. Uh, it could change. It may not change. It may stay exactly the same. I don't know yet. The fun thing is, we don't have to know yet. I'll be curious uh, when this gets hit with the sponges, just what we what is left behind. I'm also going to hit this with some of the brown matter. I'm going to hit it with some... Where's my crimson? Ah, yes. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow, Rubicon. I appreciate that. Obviously, Gandalf does. Yeah, he definitely does. I'm almost thinking about a little bit of a pre... See, that this is something I really haven't done very much before. Is almost thinking of a little preview on my... If I'm going to have that firelight stuff going on here. Uh, you know what? I'm even going to... Look at this. I'm even going to throw a little bit of that fanchion red into here. Because, uh... Hashtag, why not? Get a touch of that going up here. More of that down here. So she might kind of rock back and forth a little bit. I might even take a little bit of blue tack to stabilize this some more. I'd have to kind of let some of the glue dry and some other things first. Where's my... Ah, there it is. So that's a little bit of the brown matter. Uh, Spectrum recommends cobalt, teal... Not as powerful as Thalo Green. Ah, Cobalt Teal is opaque. Well, that's interesting. That intrigues me. Because usually, you know, yeah, those Cobalts, they tend to be on the... on the transparent side of things. So, oh, you know, I think I was going to try and get either Cobalt Teal... Oh, Cobalt Turquoise. But for weeks, it was just... It, it wasn't available. It was just... It was out. They didn't have it. Ooh, look at that. That's a little bit of the burnt umber and some of, well, purple, brown matter, about a million other colors that are just sort of now trapped in the brush. I mean, does it really matter? Um, nah. I sort of made myself a bit of a Van Dyke brown over here. We'll just uh, we'll throw that on the scabbard here and we'll do some kind of something on that later a little bit of our pains gray I'm just gonna throw this back here and 
thin it down just a bit to get it to flow a little. See, there's a bunch of insets in here, and I'm not sure, do I make those insets a different color or not? Uh, like I said, the options to, to play with different stuff are always there. Just looking to get this stuff covered. Hmm. Well, indigo. We haven't really gone straight up indigo at all. We'll do that here. And we'll do that here. Maybe even a little more indigo over there. I think all that just leaves us is, is the face. Uh, Indian yellow is going to be very transparent. I haven't started painting it, but it seems like it won't have the tinting power of cadmium or ochre. Oh, thanks, Ruby. I, I, I'm really hoping that I have a second one of this because I think it could be fun to, to try this again with either different lighting, no lighting, something just different and fun. Now, this is a little different. This is a little bit different than what I've done before, partially because, well, the proportions and everything are bigger here. So it kind of lets me do something along the lines of that. And we got a ton of sponges prepped over here. Uh, let's see, Grimguard Studios. Uh, if I start drinking, no painting happening. Uh, let's see, Snow Treasure. Hey, sorry I didn't... You snuck in there. You snuck in there on me. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks for the link to this figure right here. Look at that. Look at that leaves. Look at all the different colors already there. Yeah, let's go with our smaller sponges here. Al Capone, that is what I have found so far. I mean, outside of maybe something like an indigo blue cerulean blue and that's the way with watercolors it's it's been that way kind of since my early days of painting you know i always thought of cerulean blue as that one opaque color now i do have to grab onto her to be able to do this here i think you can see some of the purple that's starting to show up here you can really see it over here I'm going to just take some of this away. Now, I do have uh, an interesting little thing that I just thought about and discovered, and I'll show you guys as we let our little pre-glaze have a chance to settle in place. I'll just take away some of that. I think you can see the general gist of what it is we're trying to do here. Now, let's get a nice solid grip on this here. Let's take away some more. So I cut up tons of these sponges here in advance. There's a lot of pointy things on this. I'm just noticing that now. <laughs> There's a ton of pointy things here that everything wants to get stuck on. And there's a hair in there. It didn't want to go away. It's kind of leaving some red behind there. And as we take this away, we just get some different colors. All stuff that we can work with in our subsequent layers here. Let's do the same on our scabbards. It leaves so much behind. Now, the reason why this left a little bit more behind is some of the colors I'm using are staining. That crimson is, the purple is, the indigo is kind of a staining color too. A lot of the same colors that we used in the crazy creature caster figure. <laughs> Alright, we're going to let that sit there for just a second. Uh, let me see. I'm just gonna let's see. I have to have a gander at that. Which brand did you end up picking up? It was the Windsor Newton. Actually, I just mixed myself a new uh, little, new little thing of cerulean blue today. Still trying to wrap my head around the opaque versus transparent. 
of the paint, so I went ahead and make sure to label my bottle as such. Oh, hey, Rubicon, how are you doing? Or, oh, sorry for the question here. As we welcome in Josh, that's what I meant to do is welcome in Josh. Sorry, Rube. I've never seen this done before. This is like the opposite of dry brushing. Actually, with the oils, dry brushing is kind of essential, and you're going to see that. Now, I do have a ton of videos on the YouTube channel. They're basically older Twitch sessions now at this point, and you can see it always starts like this, because what this does is it gives a little bit of a platform for the new layers to work with. It also lets those new layers be really, really, really thin. And not thin as in wet, but you'll see as we get into our applications of this, the, the colors here. Uh, tubes give oil content opacity. Oh, thanks, Josh. Now, check this out. I found this. Where the heck is it? There it is. So I did this when I was 13 in oils. So this is kind of why I enjoy oils. So this right here. I think it's about 20 by 36. It's either 20 by 30 or 20 by 36. I have no idea. It was, it was a long time ago, like a long time ago. And this was done with oils. And it's, it's so hilarious because this thing would be so much easier to do now, knowing what I know from painting oils on miniatures. It'd be actually way easier to go back in two dimensions and start working on paintings again, which is why I still got to do that. I still have to go back. No, I just wandered in here. Yeah, Rube, now check that out because there are a ton of them. And, well, this, this started out the exact same way. Just what we did here, we also did on this. So this is actually still a VOD that you can watch on the channel right here. We're using actually a lot of the same colors on this as we did on the other. Uh, let me see. I just want to get caught up on things. Let's see. El Capone says oversimplification is that opaque covers but doesn't blend. It's uh, actually, well, think think of this. So think of this right here. That was actually a bunch of transparent glazes that were applied and then blended wet into wet with the phthalo green. It just, after a while, you kind of just get used to handling things. And it just, it's uh, its one of those things that just kind of happens as you mess around with it and handle it more and more. Now let me get my paper towels out here. So we got to make sure that that's relatively dry. Now let's start thinking about what we're going to do. Let's see what, what we do with the skin tone or something along those lines. Let's take some of that yellow. Oh, touch of Terra Rosa. And we got to make this. As you can see, there's not a lot of paint on this brush. But then look at this. When it hits the miniature, all of a sudden, look at look what it's doing. It's because of that pre that pre glaze that we just did. All of a sudden, we get ourselves some blending going on, even in these early, early, early stages. I mean, like, super early. Hands, yeah, hit the hands, too. So already starting to get some skin tone there. Now let's start thinking about maybe some overall bluish light, which means we're going to take some paint out of the brush. Ectocon <laughs> says, I was still drooling on myself at 13. And Spectrum was lighting things on fire, as was I, because... Uh, Boy Scouts, yes indeed. If Boy Scouts don't turn in, you into an axe-wielding pyromaniac, then they're nothing will. And boy, was that fun. I mean, it was Lord of the Flies every single camping trip. And that was just fantastic. So here, we'll see how we're starting to play with that initial glaze already. start to think about what's going to happen here with this hair. We're going to maybe even toss a little bit of indigo into this. But you can see how dry this is. I mean, look at that. It's practically a dry brush. I think I can turn up my brightness just a, 
just a touch. Oh, look, we got Y2 Ace in the house. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. I was doing really bad pencil drawings of made-up comic characters. Well, actually, that was the one thing that I was just never able to do was the comic stuff. I always wanted to, but I could never just... It was always... It was kind of like realistic or bust. I could never do was a caricatures. I was kind of disappointed. I was bummed that I just it didn't work. Ah, oh, that that's really fun, really fun. That it wasn't a Boy Scout, but we had a fireplace, so I learned how to work that. We welcome in Deadbeat artist. How are you doing? Uh, let's Ectogaunt was drawn. Oh, the old Yeo, Beavis, and Butthead. Ah. Uh, Boy, I tell you that whole that whole TP skit would have a really what would you say, kind of a different uh, effect today or a different uh, <laughs> have a whole new meaning today. Now here I'm gonna go with the the mm, tempted to go with the bluer metal down here because if we want that that firelight coming this way, eh, I don't know. But remember, if we want some kind of object source lighting, we better establish this early. So let's do that. Uh, let's see. Funny thing is, my brother and I knew, knew how, but our parents didn't. Uh, let's see. Uh, I just reread Lord of the Flies. It's so much better as an adult. It was, yeah, we, we definitely... It, it's a miracle... Not only that we're still alive, but actually any of those campgrounds are still there. And Tootie Foodie is here. How are you doing? This is we're taking some of the fanchion red here again. We're doing that same thing. You're a touch of that cadmium orange. Uh, let's see, current went through strange things to comedy, that's for sure. And Y2 Ace is potting his oils and uh it's messy. It is messy as I was just doing another one. I was doing the cadmium or the cerulean blue. Yeah, here's a here's a couple of them right here from the other night. All right, let's see what we can do here with our teensy bit of firelight. We'll just see how we're just kind of. It's literally like a dry brush. Now maybe that's gonna. I don't want that to be too pinkish. So here we got, this is almost a straight up cadmium orange right here. And we've got to be really, shall we say, sparse with their application of this. Too much is too much. And it gets to be too much in a hurry as we welcome in Numbskull. How are you doing and how goes your printing? I think we're almost, uh, let's see, unexpected. The hue colors might throw things for a loop. Yeah, that basically the hue, obviously it, it's for a couple of things. It, it cuts down on the cost, right? And in some cases it cuts down on maybe some of the nastier things that might be in it as well. So obviously your replacements for cadmium, for cobalt, that's what they tend to be. Let's have a little more of our underlighting here. You notice we haven't gone into any of the the fluorescent orange yet. I'd like to at least get a little bit of this on the underside over here. And I mean a tiny, tiny bit. Like it's really, the firelight's kind of coming from this away. And look at how dry this is again. I cannot emphasize that. Uh, Risen is a happy little dry brush here and a happy little dry brush there. So Josh, actually, uh, a John from Warlord, he sent me a... Oh, I can actually... Oh, say we all. oh thank you so much. A trash Arama does the subscription thing. How are you doing? Ah, look at this, huh? Yeah, Bob Ross. And there was just some really neat stuff in here. Actually, this was the wildest thing. Was well, the painting classes, but also, where is it here? It was ah, this is it. This is a really neat chapter in this book. 
so the ASMR and it was all about just the voice the timber and just being kind of chill and just making it well a chill place for people to hang out to the point where they just play people his videos just as a kind of a like some people would use white noise or ocean noise when they're trying to just relax and fall asleep some people use it for meditation so already starting to get kind of that little bit of a warmth from under there so trash what do you have going on i hope all is well and thanks again for the Hello, subs little hobbits. Spark my ganja. well now wow how a this is just too he's here because we have the unofficial or the unofficial undead bob ross has followed And of course, we now we muster the Rohirrim. Here it is. We muster the Rohirrim. There they are. Thank you so much for the host. I still got to do that Aowen bust. That would be so much fun. And I think it would be, maybe be about this size. Maybe more the size of the Blackheart Models busts. But that would be super cool. To be able to do one of something like that. To sculpt a bust. Now it would be super cool if there was a 3D scanner that could scan that bust and then I could just make some more so that I could paint them in different color schemes and that sort of thing and not just have a one and done. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get a little touch of my firelight out to there. Something in this way, this way, maybe, maybe up here. Maybe that much. Which means possibly a little over here. We'll see what happens with that. Do some purple now. Uh, let's see. Speaking of potting, there's supposed to be a good clay in the soil around these parts. Uh, I'm wondering about making some paint for 2D. So would you say... Uh, well, I, I'd, I'd have to say it's my only fantasy... I uh, think because, well, and now, I've never actually read the Lord of the Rings books. Uh, I didn't actually know what Lord of the Rings was until Kathy dragged me into the theater in 2001. And I've never read any other, I've never read any sci-fi, never read any fantasy or anything like that. Oh, look at that purple. Look at how that starts popping out right now. And I've actually treated the Lord of the Rings more like a historical type of a deal. I'm going to do this on the other side now. Because there's an awful lot of really nice YouTube historical videos that take into account the Silmarillion, the Lost Tales, the Notes. They basically take all that information and they compile that into something more of a historical database. So I can sort of approach it more as like a history, which is really fun. Hey, Sky King in the house too. Yeah, the, the, the official undead Bob Ross, literally as we showed the Bob Ross book. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. I, I don't know if you saw it. But just as you follow, we were looking at this book. We were just looking at this thing. See, just like the oils are everywhere, Bob Ross is everywhere. Now let's get a little bit of this purple in here. Let's start to get a little bit of uh, some rosiness into the skin here in various places. Because we're going to need some greens in here too. But we'll just uh, throw some rosiness in there. Okay, that's purple. What could this be? Ah, maybe that could be teal. Ah. These right here could be teal, I'm thinking. So let's uh, see if we can't mess around with that. So how are you doing, Sky King? Oh, let's see. How... Yeah, we... I think we saw the first Hobbit movie. Oh, well, actually, now we have seen the other two because I think there was a birthday get-together and people heard that we hadn't seen those yet so they said well you have to watch these so we watched them and i went okay 
and yeah, that was the end of that. Now I am taking my new, ah, oh, look at that nifty teal color. Is that not sweet? So yeah, you never know when a color just sort of proves useful, maybe in a way you didn't expect. But look what's happened. See how that's mixing with the purple that's already there? This is how we just, we get like an extra layer for free or an extra blend for free. We're just placing color on here, but because of that underlayment that we did, I don't know, maybe I should start calling it that. More like Bob the Builder instead of Bob the Painter. We'll just call it an underlayment. Yeah, I'm actually going to let a little bit of this turquoise... Mmm, actually... That's kind of neat. That's sort of interesting right here. Uh -huh. You know what? I think maybe we'll do something like that. That might be interesting. Let's uh, pop up this yellow in here a little bit. Oh, you got some Bob Ross Pez dispensers. Do they deal out happy little accidents? I guess that that's the that's the question. Now, I don't, I don't know if you want happy little accidents coming out of a Pez dispenser, but... So, that's gold. You know, now I'm starting to think... Yeah, let, let's see if we can't do some just regular kind of metals here. We'll get a little bit of our indigo into that. Look again. Yes, it's a smaller brush, but we still have to go a little bit drier here. It's still important. We're changing our color up here a little bit. You know, maybe let's have that just be some kind of a gold-ish color. And by gold, I mean, oh, a little bit of green. Uh, let me see. Uh, Tolkien was creating a world. I read Lord of the Rings over 20 times. Started, oh, in 1969. Well, it was... Just the the last one, I think I was I was exercising, and the last one they played was. Some of them are what you know, Okay, why did Sauron or Sauron want the ring? Why? What happened with Numenor? Uh, why did they take Sauron Sauron back to Numenor with them? How did the? Why were there just so few of the faithful? Why? Why did the? Were they not? You know, the humans not granted the immortality that they wanted so bad. Could all of that have been avoided? Uh, most do 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 do. Oh, Sky King ordered more oils, including magenta. Now, was it a quinacrinone magenta or one of those kind of things? Because that's a neat color, I have to say. Now, look at this. It's practically a green, but yet because of everything else that's out here, it still sort of looks like it is a gold. Uh, let's see, Lumberjack, that's how he treats Song of Ice and Fire. The, yeah, Lumberjack, Tim, that's... Uh, now, I haven't read those or seen the show. And guess what? I think it's a, a site called Baz Battles. And that's uh, it's a YouTube thing. And they normally do historical battles. Well, what did they do? They did a bunch of Song of Ice and Fire, basically historical battles... And that was super helpful for me to understand something that I was never going to read, never going to watch. So see, we're starting to place our, starting to place some things here. Uh, let's get some of that over here too. Now we got to decide. What, what's this? Is this going to be gold? Is it going to be regular metal? You know what? Let's uh, let's go for the gold. Let's just do the gold. I think that might be more fun. See how that's all kind of blending with other stuff here? Look at this. Isn't that easier? Isn't that just so much easier? It just kind of happens by itself. Gonna get some more of my faux cadmium yellow light. So say we all! So say we all. Spider-Man, thank you so much for the subscription. It is appreciated. 
So folks, I know I've said this in a couple of uh, previous episodes, but the all the subscriptions and the bits and all that kind of stuff, that has directly transferred into me being able to get more of the oils, more different types. And I don't know if pe people heard, so I've got, come in here, I don't know when they're going to get here, maybe in the next week or so, tons of illustration boards so that I can do a bunch of these. So say we got opaque, transparent, semi-transparent. See we got these mixes, so we're cutting it with the white here. I'm going to be doing this with every single paint color. Now some of them will be Patreon videos, some of them will just, they'll be up there on, on YouTube for so people can see those. Oh look at that. Look at that nifty gold that's going on. And it's just, it's no work at all it just kind of happens now again there's minimal amounts of paint that's being applied here like minimal amounts of paint not lots of paint because if you if you're chucking in lots of paint here it's just gonna ugh, you're gonna run into some issues uh, let's see there is no base coat there is only oils baby I mean, and this is your palette. I, that's you know, that's something I gotta uh, do as a uh, as a book of waffles thing. Is the miniature becomes your palette? I thought I'd done that. I never did that. I thought for sure I'd done one of those, but I was looking around earlier today. I have not done one of those. So someone's got to remind me to do that. Let's see. Lumberjack is in Jersey, and this service is terrible. Uh, let's see. Moe's Magic in the house. I'm starting to think you may be a fan of Lord of the Rings stuff. It's... I guess when the movies came out, that was a very interesting time just for us in general. Just because of what was going on with the world and with us, where our 2D art business that I'd worked on for 20 years had been wiped out in the space of... A day so that was fun but it just uh, once the the Lord of the Rings game came out so you know I had to I wanted to study what these guys were about what the Easterlings were about what Rohan was about and, and you know now I know why the Easterlings and Harad absolutely hate and despise Gondor I, I know why the Dunlendings despise Rohan and they kind of have some pretty good reasons for doing that which that what that does is it gives me ideas for scenarios you know for, for playing and that sort of thing ah uh, snow trudge yes this will go on the YouTube channel oh and there's something else too so I only I wish I oh we got Bilbo's brush doing the raid thing so real quick I discovered a couple weeks ago that I can make this entire VOD a highlight. Like, if it's 10 hours long, it, it would be permanent. So, yes, the YouTube channel, but now I've discovered that you can actually make these things permanent in a way that's not quite the way Twitch usually thinks of it. So, yeah, this will be permanent in a couple of places. So, for our new Raiders... Now, Deadbeat Artist will be right back. Uh, oh, Layla, how are you doing? Thanks so much for the raid. And, and folks, if you're not already following Bilbo's brush, you should do that. So, Bilbo, what were you, uh, what were you working on? Speaking of Lord of the Rings, we want to know what you were working on. And hopefully it was a good stream. Oh, and look at that. Look at that, the glowing sword. The sword glows blue. It glows blue when orcs are around. All right, so we've got this big old nasty blob of color here, right? Well, we, we had one. And now what I was doing in the last night's session, I was really emphasizing, emphasizing this idea of scumbling here. So we take that paint and we scumble it into our next layer. Look at that. See, we just kind of scumble that, blend this out so easy look at that so easy to blend that out 
Uh, let's see. Oh, and thanks for the, uh, let's see. It, it's kind of funny because this is the, the small brush. I mean, you know, we're used to, this This is what I'm used to working with. And we'll be still working with those. Ah, Bilbo was painting the barbarian. Now, were, were you, I kind of am assuming that you were, you were messing with the oils again. Because you kind of been having a well, obviously a good a good run with the oils. We're gonna take a little bit of our titanium, a little bit Hello, of our cerulean. My Speaking of hobbits, is ow. Thank you so much for the follow, Liligu or Liligu. Either way, just let me know the correct way to say that. Now, see, we got this chain of highlights here. If I want this to be more of a moonlit thing, we need to get ourselves a little bit of a more of a sky blue there almost. Now we're going to take some of this here. And we're just going to position this right along here. And we're going to do the same over here. And we're going to do the same over here. And we're going to do the same over here. Look at this one long chain of highlights, even into the hair, like all the way up to here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Al Capone has to, uh, oh, do the commute thing. Uh, Bilbo is really enjoying the oils. Ah, uh, okay. I shall remember that. Ah, she's about to about to join the oil cult. And now, I guess the, the most important thing with the oil paint is you really don't want to drink the Kool-Aid. Because the Kool-Aid helps your paint move. But look at this. It's a little fun. Just blending that out. Now we've got ourselves. Thank you so much for the follow. Painting big. Gandalf appreciates it too. Here, now we're going to soften out this side. Look at this. We're kind of taking a bit of an angled brush stroke on that. All right. Now over here. What are we going to take? We're going to take our uh, Payne's, Payne's Gray. Indigo blue, a touch of that burnt umber. And what we want to do is just get a little bit of our a little bit dark right here. Then just always got to have our paper towel handy here. Take some of that paint off the brush. And as always, it's just so important to keep in mind less paint is more with the oils less is always more and uh, well more is always going to be less you know what just for fun I will take a little turquoise right there and now we're going to take some of our indigo some of our white Mix that together again. Let's get another form of light in there. This is going to be more of a yellow right here. And this is the thing with the metal. You're looking for what the heck could it be reflecting? It could be refle reflecting a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe think of off-camera things nece not necessarily stuff that's just on the miniature itself but maybe some off-camera things that are that are being reflected too so you can see we got a lot of stuff going on how long did that take ah that didn't take long that didn't take long at all uh team wapple and team oil let's see one of us one of us uh, let's see, this is Ant from... Oh! So, folks, um, definitely give 
Anne, a well, I'm sure all of you here are already following Anne and probably have, like I have, for how many years? Nah, we won't say how many years. So how have you been doing? It's, uh, what's the name of your, your show again? Tell everybody what the name of your show is here so that they know and maybe when it's on so that if they don't already know about it, they know to look for it. Because I've been able to catch you a couple times during the day. It's usually kind of in the afternoon sometimes, I'm thinking. So please let, let us know. Yeah, let's get a little bit more of our, yeah, a little bit of juicy highlight right there. We have options here. We can let this sit for a little while, right? And just proving drawer. Let the paint sit in the proving drawer. But before we do that, we are going to take a little bit of this permanent green because nothing goes better with golds than greens. So let's just jump some of our greens into there. I mean, purple, green, all that stuff goes fantabulous with gold. <laughs> Numbskull, the OPEC artist. I'm liking that. Hey, and Brushcraft in the house. So, folks, also be sure to give Brushcraft a follow because, well, you'll get the minis, but you're also going to get some 2D art there as well, some digital illustration. Yes, indeed. Oh, let's get some green on this side. What the heck are we doing? We totally forgot. And now look at this. You see how dry that is? That's what I mean with the oils. That's how dry you get. Look at this. There's practically hardly any paint going here. I go over here. Look at this. Let's get some green in her hair. That has no problems covering there because we already have plenty of nice, rich paint already there. Yeah, Rube, you know what? I've, I've seen this, but I guess it's one of their older ones now. I don't see it as much as I used to. I was just looking around for references today, and they'll... You're right, a whole, a whole you-know-what ton of people have painted this thing. Now look what happened. See all that, that magenta that's on the brush there? Basically, the green is sort of replacing some of that magenta. Uh, let's see. Do-do-do, painting big. Ah, there we go. We have the link for, t for painting big. So folks, be sure to check that out because you're going to see some fun stuff. So now... And do you have a bunch of stuff up ready for ReaperCon? I'm sure you'll be doing classes. I'll be doing the, the, the Fort Wapple thing, of course, as you can imagine. So look at this. Now this is where we're hoping. See all, all that, that violet that's getting into the brush? We're hoping for that to happen here. Because as with each brush stroke, it gets dirtier and dirtier. But we can rely on all of that lovely pre-glaze to help us out let's get some of that into her skin if a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere right we're putting purple into her skin now we got the green in there we got magenta we're getting some purple into there we're getting all the skin colors in there all the colors of the rainbow yes Bilbo's breath scumbling Scumbling is, uh, I don't know, it, it's so funny because uh, with, with 2D art, scumbling is something you don't even give a second thought to. But then in the miniatures world, it's like, what is this weird magical thing of which you speak? It's a scumbling thing. What is this? I do not understand. What, what, what say you with this? Let me just chuck a little bit of our red over there. We'll do... Something like that over here, too. Let's do something with this. And we're going to go back to our larger brushes now. We're going to take a... I'm thinking a bit of a greener approach over on this side. Remember, we got this whole underlayment right here. Uh, you can find me at Twitch TV Painting for my own stuff. Tuesday, Wednesday afternoons, I do the Reaper Pro Tip Show. That's That's the one. That's the one I'm thinking of. Now look at this. Look what's happening with my teal. Remember we chucked this over here. Look what's going to happen. See how it's blending with the brush there. Doing all the stuff. Look at that. 
I, I'd say it was like so easy it's illegal, but uh, we don't want anybody to know. It's just between us. I get minimal amounts of paint here. The less paint you put on there, it's not just going to take less time to dry. You're going to be able to get that many more additional layers on there. Because how many times have we heard here, you know, folks that are having really a tough time that are getting any kind of secondary, tertiary layers, much less layers beyond that. That's the key. Less is more. And we're doing the same thing. Now we got a little bit of that crazy yellowish color here. Look at how, look at the, how the, remember, caress the brush, don't crush the brush, because this way you get a nice light stroke. Why does this dry brush work here? Because, well, we've got so much, there's already so much wet paint underneath there. Yeah. So much wet paint already. Ah, uh, look at that fun, look at that purple's mixing in there, do all that kind of fun stuff. So folks, Orchrist Gaming, be sure to give them a follow too, because they have joined us. So Orchrist, how's it been going? I apologize that I have missed so many of your streams of late. I've been doing a lot of filming. Basically, once ReaperCon begins, I won't be able to film anymore. So I'm basically trying to film as much as I can now. And then... Uh, <laughs> have stuff that I can post during all of the ReaperCon festivities. Alright. We got this thing sitting right here. It's waiting patiently for us to blend it. Ah, I just got the kids to bed as we welcome in Lady B. Oh, uh, Sky King is asking about Indigo. Wherever that went. So basically this has turned out to be the blue version of everybody's favorite Terra Rosa. These are fantastic. They're opaque, yet they're not thick. They're physically, like, consistency-wise, they're thin. They are really opaque. They do some ama and they're utilitarian. Because the indigo... Where's my vehicles here? Here we go. Because we use the indigo and the Terra Rosa massively as we were painting our BT-7 right here and uh, I that's I'm not oh that's no that's not a trench works I thought it was nope not a trench works the t28 was a trench works so yeah the the indigo is just it's it's like a Swiss army knife of paint and so is the so is our lovely Terra Rosa now let's do some blending here look at this I'm gonna take these two Actually, we're going to use a different blending brush. We're going to use a bigger one here. So see that green? See how we're going to scumble, right? Hashtag scumble. So we scumble those two right together. We leave that edge there because, well, why not? It's a nifty little edge. Let's play with that some more. So we'll do this now. Let's go with something different. Here, so that's actually a little bit of purple there. All the while, see how dry this is. Look at how dry this freaking paint is. Uh, the cobalt deep hue is a nice one. And uh, yo, Lady B, you and me both, we love the cerulean blue. Well, I mean, it was a huge part of this. This thing right here, that face is. Her, all of her skin tone is probably, what would you say, 85% cerulean blue. And we painted that a couple months ago. Now, again, folks, we have a new one of these. So I'm going to try and do an actual video of that. And actually, for folks that are new here that haven't had a chance to see this yet, and you're wondering, what's this deal with the oils? Why does Jim like oils so much? So when Jim was a wee lad of 13, he painted this in oils. He had no idea what the bleep he was doing. He just kind of like looked at a painting, took paint, and just sort of slapped it on here. Speaking of cerulean blue, Lady B, guess what's up in that sky? Yeah, there's, there's a lovely cerulean blue up in that sky there. Now, knowing what I know, now this thing would be so much easier to paint. Oh, I slaved away at this thing for weeks. 
when I was a kid. Oh, that was brutal. But it was it was fun. Let's see. Which pale yellow is that again? Uh, let me find it here. It is called, I keep wanting to call it something else, uh, Brilliant Yellow Pale. And it's from Williamsburg. So it is going to be more on the pricey side, I'll tell you that. Our Chris Gaming is okay, starting to get stretched too thin. I just want to make sure I don't miss... Uh... Well, I, I had been... Uh, I think I first started using the oils when I was 11. And that was just kind of doing your typical sort of Bob Ross, Bill Alexander landscape type things. Now, I'm desperately trying to find a seascape that I painted, which is actually my favorite painting that I did as a kid. Uh, that one definitely is not my favorite painting that I did as a kid. I'm, just, I'm still trying to find that seascape because I loved sailing ships. So if you see me doing videos of sailing ships, well, <laughs> now you know why. Here, let's get a little bit of our mm, Terra Rosa combined with some of this and start to do some lighter skin tones, perhaps. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> Thank you so much, SLS Airbrush. How are you doing? And thank you so much for the follow. Ah, look at this. Look at how that just blends with what's already here. Look, so we can even, we don't even necessarily have to rely on a blending brush. We can just take this brush. Let all this lovely paint just move around. We got that green there. Why are we going to wipe out that green? Let's let's leave some of that there. Or if you just say, you know what, the heck with it. We'll just let all of that stuff get pushed together. So either way is fine. But you can see we're getting lots of fun different colors into our skin. Uh, so I never got into my painting until 14 and it was only two weeks of an art class. And Lady B didn't get into abstract art until her 20s. Yeah, Lady B, what was the other? There was another color that I had for the first. Oh, it was, um, I think it was the Purple Matter. That was another kind of an important color to have, that Purple Matter. Now, I am going to let a little bit, a little bit of my cadmium orange get into that. I'm looking for some more lights here in the skin tone. I mean, we got a long ways to go as far as making this lighter, which is good. I mean, no sense in, in rushing into that. Now, remember, all every brush stroke, I'm picking up paint. I'm picking up some of the color that was there, so I've got to kind of refresh that brush. Now we'll take some of this away again. I'm just going to keep... I wish I had like a bazillion paper towels here. So we got that paint out of the brush. We've got our brush stroke right here. And we're going to go after the edge of that. And as you can see, edge be gone. It, it's, like, it's like Gandalf. We just make that edge magically disappear. All, all the harsh edges, those are all gone. Make that go away too. Let's see what we can do for her. Now we, I'm thinking that's going to be blocked. I, I was thinking of doing some firelight on the chin, and I realized, nah, that's probably blocked. Uh, let's see, or Krista, that was my first real delve into art. Uh, Lady B, these are the, the Dick Blick master strokes. So figure if it's got a black handle. And this lighter ending on it here, it's going to be the Dick Blake. All of the Cotman's are this uh, crazy blue color. Every single one of them is this color. And we'll be using that, uh, the Quad Zero. Uh, oh, look at this. We got Kathy in the house and Renru. So, folks, give Renru a follow. Uh, let's see. Gumbotron. That's a fantastic name. Let's see, how do you clean a brush to load it with another paint? This is the extent of the cleaning right here. I mean, literally, this is it. And you can see past cleanings here uh, on the paper towel. 
because if I if I keep dipping it into I'll say thinner the brush gets all watery and guess what happens it just wipes the paint away and that's uh, we don't want to wipe the paint away we want to keep the paint on there so I guess Kathy's still getting ready for her uh, her pyro club there let's get some of this lighter coat look at that look at the difference that makes uh, so hopefully that answers the question there let's see lady B just got here uh, I think if you would have been introduced to ah I think it would have been introduced to the arts as a good at a good age it would have been much better artist and I had such a hard time learning even the most basic stuff uh, do to do, do, do. oh let's see oh that corruption has made me want to do oils as soon as I move it's oil time now pyro club is in half an hour well look at this we got samurai Jack <laughs> hey look at this very appropriate so now samurai Jack how many uh how many of the ReaperCon Zoom classes did you sign up for? All of them or just most of them? I'm thinking you did a couple. Uh, let's see. Oh, first world, don't set the, don't set fire to Pyro Club. Uh, you know what I'm going to do here? Let's get some reflected light on this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get some more light here. And the idea is it's going to mix with all those fun colors we already got there. Get some of this onto her chest. Take away some of that. Sometimes I just literally wipe it away with my fingers. Look at that nice nifty little blend that we've got going right there. And gold has followed. Thank you so much for that follow. Uh, let's see, one of the five classes is a repeat. <laughs> Sky King has bequeathed his acrylics. Yeah, ba basically right now I've just, I've got some, I got the Reaper Clear and Liner paint sitting next to me here. And obviously the, the Green Stuff World liquid pigments. But as far as acrylic paints, uh, the, the cupboard is looking pretty sparse for those here. Uh, well, I still have the contrast paints around because, well, enough people still want to know how to use those. So I still got the contrast paints around. Back to some lights under here. Oh, what the heck. I'm just going to throw something lighter in her eyes. So, so here's the, the Quad Zero Cutman that Lady B and I have been talking about. Uh, he's got to keep it in his kink in his kinking keeping his pro acrylics and contrasts uh, I did a zoom over at, at T1 at twitch with two people and it was rough I oh, have Samurai Jack has way too many paints yeah this this has been more like uh, was that 1984 and that one crazy character that kept bragging about how many words they were eliminating from the dictionary or from the English language or whatever it was. Like, we, we took out 15 words this week. So now we know. All right, what does that look like when it's actually light? That will tell us. And let's see what this looks like with some actual light on her cheekbones. Now we got to start figuring out what are we what are we seriously going to do here? Let's get serious about some golds. Let's see that we were kind of strategically placing some of these things. Let's let's do some strategery on here. Hey, Loim, how's it going? So hopefully, I know it's not the same, but hopefully you're looking forward to doing some Reapercon stuff. There, is it a little bit closer? Uh, they can have the word acrylic. Ah, there we go. I like it. I like it. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking up here at the, the chat there. Bags and bags of paint. Now we've got our... Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, this is hilarious. What have we not touched yet? We haven't even touched the, the fluorescent orange yet. 
That's that's really that's funny. We'll get to that. I promise. Although sometimes I lie. And I do something completely different. Just to make you guys stay on your toes. So now we're starting to position a couple of our... And these aren't the lightest lights either. These are not the lightest lights. But we got to get something here to indicate. And we're going to blend these out too. But I just have to have something here. There, look at that. Difference that already makes. Let's get a little bit of our yellow in here. We need to get some green into this as well. So yeah, Kathy will be with us for another 18 minutes-ish or so before the Pyro Club begins. Uh, let me see. At Sarah J, it's all fun and games until you move from gateway paints to inks. So, Moe's, uh, hopefully everything is uh, has been uh, relatively mellow and chill in your parts of the world there. And that you've been able to just do some painting. Just, just kind of relax. These certainly need some lighter tones here. As does this. Now this is also not super thin as far as liquid goes. Not super thin. As you can tell, we're, we're just starting to build some things up here. I do kind of like that green that's over there. That's pretty fun. Oh, I seem to have lost my paper towel once again. Let's see if I can get this to just kind of stay over here. Oh, that's what I used to have. Okay, now I know what's going on. All right, we were talking about that green. Let's grab some of our cadmium green. Maybe, maybe a touch of our permanent green. And this is something that I notice about the, shall we say, more bargain basement uh, permanent type colors. Is that they tend to get dried out pretty quick and get kind of chunky and chalky. So, reflected light here, but in the form of some greens. Look at that. Here, let's do that in here. If we if we can reach this little tiny brush in here. Yeah. We'll take advantage of the purple that's already sitting there. Let's do that over here, too. I was about a bit more. And a little more over here. Some oh, let's uh, let's definitely get some greens down in here. I mean, again, it's gold. Let's get some green in them. They're golds. Uh, let's see. The wife is gonna miss coloring. Well, unless well, I know. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's been de 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 bleh, been determined which day Kathy is going to do the Haribo classic but may <laughs> she might have to just do a, a a portion of live streaming just painting or coloring a coloring book. So who wants to see Kathy color in a coloring book? I'll just take some of this move this around. You yeah, know, let's get uh I'll touch a green up in here too. It it can't hurt. What could that po who could that possibly hurt? Having a little bit of green up there. I don't know. I'm gonna cool it down as well, because uh, the cadmium green sort of makes that a bit of a, a too much on the warm side. This is just gonna start looking like a well, just another highlight here instead of well, green specifically. Also noticing lots of little. There's lots of little doodads on here too. Didn't notice those before. So say we all. So say we all. Ah, Parm, thank you so much for the subscription. Here, let's have Wapple do his uh, happy dance. He's grabbing some of those things and she goes, what did we say about this? And he's like, fine. And he goes away. Uh, let's see. I've been doing a lot of streaming on my own lately since I moved. Things are great. Now nah, Mo's got himself one of those adult coloring books too. Let 
Now, uh, so Anne, just on the, what would you say, on the personal painting side, just just personal projects, maybe stuff that has nothing to do with with your Patreon page or the any of the, the streaming channels, is there just a like a colossal personal project that you've been kind of working on? Or has the move just uh, kind of, well, the move and the streaming and uh, all of the other stuff just taken up too much time and left you with no time for big kind of colossal personal projects? I just, I threw some more light in there because I wanted some. Where's my... There you are. That's the one I'm looking for. I'm going to take some of my indigo. Again, it's just such a utilitarian color. Oh, let's see. Honesty, the adult coloring books are pretty sweet. Let's see what we can do with our eyes right here. Let's get some darks in here. Now I can see right now that bit of hair is just going to be getting in the way. We are going to be doing some of our lovely panel line, pin line glazing on, on the hair because, oh, I think it'll be really fun to see that. Here, I'm just going to, I'll use my thumb palette. It's, uh, oh, uh, what was it a couple nights ago, right? We were talking about actually literally designing a thumb palette where it's one of those stupid plastic eatable rings and you and you just glue a pallet sheet to it that would be I gotta do that that would be freaking hilarious who knows that might even have to be merch before any t-shirts is literally the thumb pallet uh, you know I'm just gonna throw some of this here just so I have it I gotta figure out maybe that's gonna be teal that little uh, thing that's holding up a ponytail there now, since we haven't done anything on the back, we're just going to let that rest on my hand so I can get the other eye here. I just need some darks around that. It's kind of funny she's getting a little bit of a of a wicked look to her here. But then we did want some darker skin tones because it is, I don't know, I was thinking of moonlight here. So let's get some darks for her upper lip as well. Am I going to do any kind of tattoo type things on her face? Maybe, maybe not. I have not determined that yet. Now let's start thinking about some darks on the other side. We've got, we've been putting down lights and mid-tones. Let's not forget darks. Can't be forgetting those. That's no good. Uh, let's see. My 2D art chops are pretty antique at this point, but I haven't touched oil since college. Uh, I think uh, I think you would have a blast with them because everything just gets so much easier. It's it's more f the, the flexibility, being able to change things just right on the fly. Just saying, you know what? Yeah, didn't like that. Take a sponge, make it all go away. The ability to do the glazing, the ability to do the detail stuff. Our ability to, to scumble and plant even dry or wet oils over dry. I mean, it is unbelievable. Let's see if we can't do some glazy type stuff here. Where's my... I'm looking for this brush right here. What we'll do is we'll get some of those darker glazes into our hair because we need those. Here, let's get these uh, brushes out of our way. We're really going to emphasize the indigo touch of the ivory black here. And we got to make this so that it's really going to flow. Like you do. And let's start uh, placing that into her here. And if it doesn't flow enough, we'll just grab that much more. And see how that just flows on its own? That is your 
prototypical panel line, pin line wash. When you got the wet oils, you just have to think about the glazing a wee bit differently. We just have to let it flow on its own. Now we'll give it a little more help here, a little bit more of our thinner. Let's get this dark here. Look at see how that look at look it's moving right down there by itself. We have to let it kind of go by itself. If you force it, well, that's where you're gonna run into those problems. That's where it's gonna start removing paint. Uh, see, James, how long does it typically get paint to dry? Now, I've had it dry as well. Um, I think it was this unit right here. So I painted this all in one, basically nine and a half hour stream. There were parts of these guys that were already dry by the end of the stream. Typical drying time as we got a, a warmonger doing his thing again. He's doing the cheer with the bits. It's like, where are those? Thank you so much. I would say the average is 10 to 12. Now, this one right here, this also took less time to dry because of some of the paints that we were using, and we really went thin on this guy here, a creature caster demon. So I want to say at the end of the 20 hour, like this side was totally dry, and pretty much the next day, this side was dry too. There are some colors like cadmiums that might take a little bit longer to dry. Because, I mean, you know, it's you know what cadmiums are. And and some things like maybe like a cobalt violet might take a little longer to dry. But you have to figure that just to get the paints into these jars, the consistency of miniature paint, it's already thinned down 50 to 60%. And we're thinning it down even more. We're we're diluting it and we're also just physically thinning it down by using less paint on the brush itself now i know the mig ammo oil brushes will dry even faster but i'm pretty sure they've got something in those to make those dry faster this to me it's we're really not doing anything oh artificial i guess i don't really want to use that term but we're not like artificially forcing it to dry we're just we're just using less paint uh let's see uh gumbotron uh, how much planning do you do ahead of time for each miniature uh there was zero planning for this uh, as you can see my two references are completely different from each other and i'm still not even sure if uh, this is what i like over here that's kind of the that's one of the real benefits of the oils is that i can say you know what yeah i don't like that take my sponge wipe away the paint and start all over again like say what if i didn't like the orange glow from beneath take this sponge and i could just start again just start wiping it off if i don't like it or let's say there's just too much paint here or if i feel like there's too much you can see how much of that comes off that's the that's the beauty of the oils is it gives you the flexibility uh, a scooter i think uh, believe it or not you're gonna well you're not gonna be surprised but i literally the other like yesterday i found more another mouth and two more eyes you'll i know you'll be shocked you'll be absolutely shocked that i found more teeth and more eyes after days of searching yes and don't forget there's another one uh, oh and we got calvadia in the house how are you doing Oh, let's see, Kelvin. I say it went for the small. Oh, uh, yeah, those going. Let's see, uh, it's a painting. Uh, let's see. Uh, no problem. Uh, hopefully that we get to uh, well digitally hang out during Reprocon there, and hopefully see you then. But but take care, and everybody be sure to give painting big the big follow. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's see, Kelly, where are you located? Uh, da -dum. Uh, so see, we've got this looking. We have some darks built in here now. And we can still go darker. We can still glaze this even more. But I just wanted to get some of those darks in there. Now, now let's go 
do something over here too. We need some darks back here. Look at this. Look what's happening. See how that's going in all those little crevices right there? Look at that. That is your prototypical pin line wash. Look at that. I'm just touching the brush there. That's a pain in the you know what to get acrylic paint to do that. Even contrast paint is not going to get down into those crevices that efficiently. So look at this. See, we got more, more darks hitting in here. We're kind of layering up our darks. Uh, let's see. Oh, film noir. Film noir has value. Boom. It also has no color. So let's let's play over here. Now you'll see me add some dark. Uh, I'm just looking around here to make sure I'm not missing anything else. Okay. Now you see there's some darks. You can see that. But what you probably won't see, and this is this is kind of perfect right here. I'm gonna take some of our a bit of this kind of a teal green color here. You'll see it get lighter, but you're not gonna see any difference in color. So that's gonna be lighter. We'll make it even here. Let's go a little bit more with this. Like this. Okay. Now let's really get the uh, paint on. Now this is one of those times where I'm actually, until I can get another one of these, I've been wanting to get more of these suckers, but they're all freaking out of stock. Well, they have the long handle versions of these, which I don't want long handle version. <laughs> I don't need a long hand. I want the short handle version. I'm even going to let a little bit of my red get in there. And the idea is you're seeing the difference in lights and darks. But what's not really, really apparent is that key difference. I'm going to get a little bit of my faux cadmium yellow light out here too. Just a little bit of that. Where are we at? We're on this side here. So again, it's lighter. Let's get a little bit of my ochre into this. All right, and now well, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. We're going to get some purple into here. Yes, we are. This is all reflected light right here. Okay. So you can see there's some lights and darks in there, right? Let's bring back the color. And look at the difference we've got there. So you can see your greens, you see your yellow, you see your, your purple down there. Big, big difference. Now we're going to bring some, I think we're going to bring some more lights into this here again. I'm going to grab me another mm, brush here. Let's get a little bit of our titanium white, some of our purple going. We're, we're doing this as dry as we can. We want this to be nice and dry. Thank you so much with the of uh, uh, Jigoku's. Jigoku's. Thank you so much for the follow. Let's see. Uh, Warmonger, let's see. Hey Jim, I wake up with you this morning and I'm going to bed watching you with this crazy cheer. Well, Warmonger, you have a Good night, sleep. If you have to, if you end up uh, nodding off at a certain point, hopefully you have the the pleasant dreams of oil paints, visions of oil paints dancing through your head as you fall asleep. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, not going to continue with this train of thought. Uh, da -da -dum. Oh, it looks like Kathy's heading off for, yep, it's 8 o'clock, so she's heading off for Pyro Club. Me, I'm just starting to add a little bit more of my lighter colors to my purple here. We'll do the same on this side. Only so much I can do over here because if we want to get that sort of object source lighting look, we have to have some darks. If we don't have dark, we're not going to have any kind of reflections going on. We'll look at some purple in here too. Bit of reflected light down in here. We don't need a touch of that here too. All right. Now, let's have some fun maybe with some of the fluorescent uh, orange here. Let's see what happens with that. We haven't played with it yet. And I have not touched this stuff at all yet. We're going to give it a little bit of an assist here with our cadmium red. And away we go. There is a reason why I just I haven't touched this since we first started painting because I was hoping, like I said, it's not going to actually dry, but it would just be a little bit, uh, it would be firmed up just a bit. Let's get some more of our lighting going on over here. Yeah, that's going to make a difference. We have not yet begun to put the firelight on this. We're just starting to get some of that firelight happening. And this is by no means as light as it can be either. Let's get some on the underside here. I'm really trying to emphasize the idea of the firelight that's coming from below. Uh, Calvaria is at off scene OSL. Yep, that is definitely the case. Now, I've got some other ones where we did that. Here we go. So this is uh, actually, I think this is on the YouTube channel now. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but see, again, we got the off-camera lighting going on here because otherwise the face just would have been boring if it was just the face. So here we gave it that sort of off-camera lighting. Now we've got another one here. Is it this one? This one. So that's another example. That was the Reign of Fire bust. That's another example of the off-camera lighting there. It just makes it more dramatic. Now, of course, with the miniatures, now I think I just did, uh, yeah. So with miniatures, they're on bases. So you just have that convenience of, well, a handy-dandy light source. You know, let's get that. There we go. So with the miniatures, it's a little bit different. You, you kind of, it carries its own light source with it. With these things, it's a little bit harder. You know, you, it basically has to be off camera. Uh, let's see, no need to get, uh, let's see, the bus looks real good and skin tone nice. How about a neck tattoo? You mentioned tattoos. I, I might do that if I, if I can't f somehow just think of some kind of a reference or whatever while I'm just kind of working here. I might add that. Actually, I might, who knows, maybe I film a video of that afterwards. Because uh, I know I did that with the with the troll. I, I added the, I sculpted the mushrooms afterwards and added some other foliage things and filmed that after the fact. Here, let's... Uh, Get some more of our firelight going again on the underside of this here. Oh, let's grab a little more of my cadmium because the cadmium is super opaque. Your fluorescent orange is going to be super transparent. Uh, so yeah, the. Uh, the off-camera light source, I guess that's become more and more popular these days, it would seem, uh, with the busts. Because, well, 
there's only really so much you can do with them and when you do the off-camera light source it really is a kind of a nifty way to get some kind of little extra interest in there that otherwise maybe wasn't there and of all the the versions of this that I've seen I actually I haven't seen any with any real significant object source lighting on them so I thought well what the heck maybe we can play with that on this one Ah, oh, let's see. Ah, uh, Parm, Siskabob, bum, bum, bum. It is, a, it's a nice little open area here. Hello, you know. little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow, Super Slicer. I'm thinking it's some sort of a, well, obviously, kind of a dragony type thing that goes from here and it kind of continues down her neck it's almost like it's uh, open canvas waiting for something like that so it's sort of a cavity we're thinking sort of a firelight kind of a deal basically it's a uh, it's like she's standing in front of a campfire or just some kind of a glowing something that's glowing Let's see if we can now start to pick out just a few things that are even lighter here. Uh, there was Oh, it was this guy here. Let me see if I can move this out of the way, grab this. So I painted the miniature on a Twitch session, but all of the basing stuff, the mushrooms, uh, these things, the plants, all that was done in a video afterwards because, well, that took about three hours or so. So there wouldn't have been enough time to actually just do it in a stream. And that was that was kind of fun. Here, let's start to get some of our... Let's get a little bit of our firelight into this, I, I think, now. It, it's a little tricky. We need some on, oh yeah, we definitely need some right over here. I can't thin this down too much because then you sort of lose the intensity of the fluorescent. Uh, it kind of giveth and taketh away. <laughs> you know, it's really neat stuff. However, it does have some things. Uh, let's see, Spectrum asks, what is your best advice for painting reflections? Actually, the, the miniature just sort of lets you know because you just think about what's around it. Uh, the, the Sisters of Battle are really just a good example of that because if there's a green cloak right next to the metal, well, you, you best have some green right next, right there. Otherwise, that metal's not going to be terribly believable. Let's see if I've got something that's a good example of that. Well... Yeah, you know, like here too even. So you can see the green marble is reflecting here on his armor. Obviously the fire reflects over there, but you get back over here. Once again, you can see that green marble reflects onto his armor. We even reflected the, the purple of his little loincloth on here. So you just think what's nearby, like right here, green marble reflects on that purple reflects on that fire obviously going to reflect on here so just uh, kind of whatever's around that's what's going to reflect so hopefully that kind of uh, helps a little bit there uh, ba -ba -bum. yeah that would definitely uh, so don't be surprised if you see a YouTube video pop up where I'm <laughs> actually like painting a, well I might also I want to paint some chrysanthemums on this too so if I don't get to it here in the session now I might and I, I will be taking it uh, I don't know a couple hours from now I will be taking that uh, that pause of nature and maybe maybe I'll be able to grab myself a reference during that little pause Now, oh, the other thing, too, is uh, so tomorrow afternoon, I've got an interview. I'm going to be on Gilbert's uh, his, his little live log there, so part of the, the Styrene Syndicate and Red Dragon. 
And once that interview is over, then I'll try and get my, my regular Saturday extravaganza underway. I have no idea what might be on this Saturday extravaganza at this point. It could be many things. It could be some Lord of the Rings stuff. It could be, well, I don't know yet. Ah, yeah, see, now that's starting to look uh, cool. It's, we're getting warmer. We're getting warmer. And this is by no means the lightest light that we can do. We can certainly go lighter than this. I want to grab a blending brush here, do a little bit of blending. Now, Sky King asks, uh, and you may have mentioned this before, after the oils are dry, actually a lot of times I don't do a darn thing to them, but what you can do, once they're dry, they just it's just another miniature, it's just paint. This is the exact same stuff that I use on my acrylics. So once that oils are dry, I just brush this on there, and it's uh, fantastic. This is actually the only Army Painter product, paint-wise, that we use. Is this? Their matte varnish. It's fantastic. Love this stuff. And it's the same stuff I use on my acrylic miniatures. There is literally no difference. Uh, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, hey, Oliver Ghost. How are you doing? We're just uh, we're having some fun making things flamey here. I'm going to catch some of this on all the little spiky bits. All these little spiky bits here. Uh, let's see. Spectrum, uh, I understand, uh, and can place the main light highlights, the secondary reflection. Uh, let's see. Yep, they will all eventually be on there. Now, also to Stila... Once I discovered that you can make your, uh, what, would you, what is it? Oh, the highlights on your Twitch channel. Those are permanent and they can be your entire session. So if I do an eight hour session or a 10 hour session, I can make that whole thing be a highlight and it stays there forever. It's like permanent. So that's the other thing that I'm doing now that I know this. I'm taking all of my sessions and I'm turning those into permanent highlights. The whole entire darn thing. So that's another place you'll be able to see them too. Because obviously with some of the 8 hour sessions, if I put those on YouTube, I'd have to break them up into smaller chunks. But if I'm using them as a, as a highlight, I can keep the whole thing all together. I suppose the downside is that it doesn't have the pictures, you know, like the finished pictures the way a YouTube video would, but you know, it's a, it's a trade-off. A little bit of a trade-off here. Let's get some uh, reflected light on the underside of this bit of armor over here. Just cause to start thinking about that. Now he, oh, I can put some freehand over there. That's nice. So freehand, uh, what the heck, maybe. Maybe we will have just a little touch of firelight on this side, like a tiny bit, ever so slight. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. I think we're, I think I'm relatively caught up now. So, folks, if I if I do, I'm, I'm not trying to skip people on the chat or anything like that. Sometimes I'm really heavily engaged in what's going on here, and then there's a flurry, and all of a sudden I'm behind. So I, I will try to get caught up. Also, our intrepid moderator does shoot me a reminder, like, hey, so-and-so asked about something. And that is much appreciated. Now, we're going to start thinking about blending some of these, too. They've, they've been there a little while. I'm just going to hit a couple of lighter highlights on these guys, and then we're going to go to blending some stuff on her armor chest plate there. Uh, let's see. What, 
what color did you use for the turquoise on the shoulder pads? It was a mix. Mostly a uh, cerulean blue. Oh, thalo blue here. So basic thalo blue. And your cadmium green, pale. And I think there was also a touch of the, this, uh, what is it called? It's brilliant yellow pale. That's what they call it. So that's what I'm going with. You know what? We'll hit some highlights here too. I mean, we haven't actually really hit the lightest lights on this yet. I think we can do some of that now, maybe. There we go. Uh, do I want some down here? Meh, maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh, got to figure out what's going on with this. That's going to be some kind of metal. Let's give it some type of a color here. Maybe something that's bluish. Hmm, that's facing the front. Maybe we're going to change that real quick. And we'll go over here with our bluish light. That's better. Take some of that away, and then we're just going to blend that. Thinking I'm going to see if I can't get a little bit of a under lighting color there. That's better. And and this, well, it would be neat if I could do some kind of a, a freehand, even if it's just this. Even if it's something just like that. I'll give that a touch of a blend there. I want this to have some lights in it as well. I think this is a lighter version of the color that we used. So yeah, well, let's, uh, let's hit this here. Let's continue. We got this notion that there's some brighter highlights here. And this is all very, it's very dry. You can see how little paint is actually getting on there. Keeping this as dry as we can. Then we can work in some more of our yellow here. Let's get some of this faux cadmium yellow deep. Let's see if we can work on our little gold trim here. That's also going to set up a difference between that and our teal. Sure does. But the nice thing is is the some of that green, the teal is gonna mix in here. So by default we're gonna have some really nifty color transitions in our gold without having to really work hard, well like at all, which is always good. Less work is good. Now we haven't done any kind of blending over here. We can do that now. That's been sitting there for a good long while. Has a little bit of that purple in it. Yeah, so all the nifty little transitions that are happening there. So Oliver Ghost, I hope all is well with you. Sorry, I did not get to ask that earlier. So we're going to smooth out this right here. We got a little kind of a weird blob there. So we're going to scumble that into our green and then all goes away. All gone. We're going to do the same over here with our... Same thing we did on the other side. Let's get this with our... Gold. Now what I would like to do is have this be lighter over here where we've got this dark but darker over here where we have this this highlight thing working i'm gonna go into this that's my sort of a highlight color there okay so we kind of continue again continuing that chain of highlights as much as we can Oh, and this is the other thing, too, is that I notice, especially with these, these Dick Blick Master Strokes, the more you use them, 
the more they get broken in they just get better and better so the more you use those the better they get let's see Al Capone uh, it's only an hour and a half uh, oh yeah it is it is basically about an hour and a half that we've been painting this thing uh, a little bit uh, a little heat and a lot of kneading ah that's good Oliver so Al Capone yeah the when it gets to be winter time around here, I pretty much have to take a heat gun to that Sculpey because it is so rock solid. I mean, you could actually hurt somebody. If you threw that Sculpey at somebody, you could actually quite literally hurt them. That is how solid that gets in the winter time here when it gets cold. Uh, I think we've... Uh... I think we've started to hit on what we want to have happen here. Oh, we still need some reflections there. Oh, I think we still actually need some of this. Right there. Some more here. Okay, so we've got all those. Let's see if we can't blend some of these out. we got a bunch of little dots here. Let's start smoothing these out. Oh, look at that. It's so freaking easy. I keep thinking with acrylics, how many layers that would have to be. Oil paints, hashtag no layers. Ain't no layers with these oils, baby. Oils layer themselves. You don't layer oils. Oils layer themselves. Ooh, that should be Book of Waffle. That's book. I think that's book of waffle worthy right there. I think so. Uh, let's see. I had this one made pasta one time. I never used it again. Oh, ended up in a yard sale. I suppose now, actually, in in some of the meetings that I've been having about certain things, we were we were looking at you know, these and the difference with these and. Because these don't claim to be Kalinsky sables. And one of the things that's been kind of discovered in another person's research is things that say Kalinsky sable have a tendency to, well, not be <laughs> Kalinsky sable. So I guess that's why I don't end up being disappointed in those because, you know, they're not saying that they're some kind of super fantabulous stuff. They just kind of say, well, it's a, a sable. Maybe it's not from the tail. Maybe it's from the back. It's from the same critter, just not that same part. So see how we're adding now a little bit of a cooler light over here. Just a bit of it. So it's going to kind of oppose the firelight here. Now, one thing we've got to do is this can't all be these reds over here. we got to get some kind of opposing light color here Ugh. I'm gonna see what happens with this this could get interesting here this could get but it can't all just be that red it's gotta be something else and I can only do a couple of brush strokes with this before I have to go back and get fresh paint oh look at this I also need reflected light over here stuff that's not firelight So what is it that I'm trying to reflect? I don't know, maybe this rope here. We're going to need to get reflected light there. Not quite sure that the fire can reach that part. I don't think so. But maybe we'll just give it a little dot of it there. Alright, where's my... Ah, I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use my little chamois sponge here. That's what I used to have all the time. I want to see what happens when I mix... Oh, this little combination together here. So again, just uh, I'm gonna thin this down, I think. Because I've got, I think, enough of the other colors like that my new yellow ah there we go mm-hmm so because it had to be physically like more liquid but 
as I've been telling you, the fluorescent paint, it doesn't really like to be a liquid at all. It wants to be a solid. <laughs> it's like water. Uh, let's see. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Take Black Masters, they have to do it there. Oh, thanks, Oliver. Yeah, I'm just trying to now get... See, where's, where's the lightest of my highlights going to be? And we're really going to focus on that down here. It's got to be orangey. Now, let's see. Maybe the guy pulling hairs is named Kalinsky. Uh, is he genuine Kalinsky sable nose hair? Well, now that is the... You know, for, for here, you know, if... Uh, People always say, well, what happens if you go bald? Or, you know, like in one spot, I'll just, or if you grow bald, you just, you grow out your ear hair, your eyebrows, your nose hair, and you just, you put that all in a top knot. I mean, it would be glorious. It'd be like the, now that's fashion. That is what I call fashion sense right there. Some might say it's a fashion strikeout. I say it's high fashion. I'm going to let that sit there, and once that has been there, maybe a good 15 minutes, then I'm going to try and blend this out, but that just got to sit there. We are doing the same over here, too. We're just going to kind of put some of these down, leave them, go back, push that paint around. And let's get the underside of this, yeah. Back over here. Do I want to get any more light? Uh, nope. Nope. Can't do that. That may have to change as well. Not so sure yet. I reserve the right to change everything. We need some light into this little crevice there. We need something going on here. Oh, what the heck. Maybe I will just... Uh, I'm going to get rid of that little piece of sponge that's been sitting there since we started this. There we go. So back to some of my orange here. Can't be quite that yellow lit from that far away. Get more of an orange glow. This will block, I think, most of that. Oh, what the heck. Oh, just a little, little bit of yellow, get or orange get on to this thing here just I don't know should it really be there I don't know but I am going to take some white or some of this with my burnt umber here that's going to make a nice color we haven't really used much of this yet mm -mm. do some of this uh, rope in here we also have her skin tone I'm just going to assume she's not wearing gloves so we have to get some skin tone on this like actual skin tone Might even use some of this here as a bit of a reflecting color. We need to do some reflections back there. Also, we'll have to turn my light on to be able to do that. Because, like I've said before, to be able to film this and have the gloss not overpower everything, a lot of the lights are turned off. It looks light on screen. It is not light here whatsoever. If people walked in here and saw me painting, they'd say, why the heck are you painting in the pitch black? Why are you painting in the dark? Man, anyone that try, that is trying to broadcast something uh, being done with oils, they all know exactly what that means. I'm also going to have to get this teal a little bit brighter too. Hey, we got Drax in the house. So, folks, if you if you want to see someone else working on oils too, doing some really and actually, uh, well, he was just painting a bust last week, furiously getting that uh, that Neko bust out of the way. Go follow Drax. Uh, I don't know. I know it's one of the big child ones. That is all I know. Uh, it could be. Oh, you know, now that you mention that name, that sounds familiar. So it, I think it is. I, 
Well, you know me. I don't really remember the names of stuff ever. It's just, uh, I don't know. I have a tough time remembering names that people give things. Uh, oh, and Lord Dave in the house. Uh, let's see, we got the we got the follow for Drax. Uh, let's see, we get tons of lurkers. Is the other light you use off camera halogen? Uh, everything here is LED. There are no halogen lights. They are all LED lights. It's just, it's always been a problem since 2013, even with no LED lights, because, well, they didn't really make those back in the day like they do now. It's just one of those things, and anyone that's, that, that tries to stream the oils, they all tell me, like, yeah, man, i got to turn off all my lights, because otherwise, it's, well, obviously you got the, the glossiness going on, so it's going to reflect off of that and everything else, so it's just something you deal with. Now, over here, we're going to get I think it's just a little bit of something that's got maybe some bluishness to it. I don't know. It can't just be gradually lighter grays here. So, see that? that to me, that looks a little bit more fun right there. Now, Lady B is in, is enjoying the... Uh, now, what did you say this was, Drax? Uh, the Sword of the Dawn? Okay. Now, are there there's two are there two versions of this Drax? I I could swear maybe there's a second. Oh, there's one that's got the really long sword. Okay, so maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah. Know what? Oh, let's let's play with something else here instead. So what we're gonna do is put just a minimal amount of our shading in here. Where's my ah? We'll just use this as a blending brush right here. Get some of that junk out of there. That's what could be fun. So instead of floral patterns, ah, oh, that's what it, I knew there was something I was thinking of doing. I knew there was. Let's see if this works. I have no idea if it will. It could fail horribly. <laughs> you never know till you try. I uh, love the oriental aspects of the painting and the miniature. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Uh, it does, Drax. I just... It just seemed kind of... Uh, I know some people, a lot of people have used it, and they, they've made it look great. I wasn't really interested in that, especially since, well, it would kind of cover up all this. Kind of like that, uh, was that the Baba Yaga that you're going to be doing, and it's got that giant thing on the back of it? And it said, nah... I don't think I'm going to include this. So what we'll try and do here is maybe a little bit of our... Yeah, instead of just trying to make that more shading, let's see if we can do some patterns on this. Just a little something like we've done before. A little bit of a circle there. And I think this could be something fun to do maybe even on the, the purple over here. Speaking of which, I'm going to give that a couple of highlights too. Oh, let me see. Is that a back piece? How's it going? Or did, let's see. Oh, I have ended up lifting paint off a of mini when trying to blend a newly placed color and older color. Well, the, the key is to be, it's always got to be drier. I mean, it literally has to be as dry as you can possibly make it. Now, the other thing, too, is remember, I just plopped those things there, and I'm going to give that at least a half an hour before I even touch it again. Unfortunately, that is something you're going to have to do, too, is you'll just have to, you'll have to place that color there and just go, all right, it's got to stay there, maybe for an hour before I can do stuff over the top of it. Now, the other thing, too, is uh, think about that placing and pushing color. Where you, you put the color there, and then you push it around. Instead of trying to layer it like it is an acrylic paint, that can be something that's really handy as well. What might be interesting... 
I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to take some of this crimson here. And this is a little bit of a glaze. I'm going to go even deeper here with this glaze. Yeah, we'll just we'll darken that up. Maybe even a little bit more. Aha, uh -huh. that's that's fun. Kind of liking that. We're going to need some reflected light on those lips there as well. Oh, let's let's see if we can have some fun with the eyeball here. Maybe. I'm going to get some of this lighter color into this. That's it, pun expected. It's it's timing. It's how how little paint there is on your brush. A lot of those things are going to just make a huge difference. That is why I always recommend working on more than one thing with the oils. And by more than one thing, I mean maybe a bust like this, five miniatures, a vehicle, like a, a ton of stuff all at the same time. Uh, they still aren't the way they should be fixed by reducing the shutter speed. Uh, is the smoke grow? Oh, talking about the fires again. So how would an acrylic painter adjust their painting style to accommodate the oils without rubbing off the paints? It's just like I've been showing you here. Minimal amounts of paint. If you put lots of paint on the brush and think about the oils like they're acrylics, that's when you're going to run into those issues of where the paint gets wiped away. Because, well, <laughs> that's what happened to me. Because I can, you know, early on, I, as much as I wanted to use the oils, I sort of thought about the oils like they were acrylics. And I had to learn those same hard lessons where you just use less and less and less paint. You also have this palette here. It's, it's absorbing a lot of that excess oil. And it's going to be timing and feel. There is no... You can't just say, well, do it like this. Because, you know, every miniature is a little bit different. Oh, hey, Drax, I don't know if you got the chance to see this. Oh, uh, pun expected, I'm still doing the same thing. I think you've seen those, those three horses that I show where I just keep saying, you know, I did less paint here, less paint here, even less paint here. So, Drax, I'm not sure if you saw this yet, but uh, this is something that I did in oils when I was 13. And it's about, I want to say it's either 20 by 30 or I think it's 20 by 36. It was a big freaking honking thing. So this is kind of one of the reasons why I always wanted to go back to oils because I've kind of been using them for a while. And speaking of everybody's favorite cerulean blue up there in the sky. So I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was anxious for you to see that because I think I might have mentioned it in your, in your uh, stream the other day. Uh, hanging in there slowly trying to make a dent in my backlog of minis. Yeah, now there's another painting that I'm I'm still looking for that I haven't found yet. That I also did. I might have done it when I was 12 or something like that. And it's a sailing ship. So yeah, that was uh, that was done with cheap oils and cheap nasty dime store uh, paint thinner and stuff. Oh yeah. That was that was hours and hours and hours painting that thing. Uh, now we got a little bit of highlight there. Let's do some of the same over here again. Trying to find a cooler highlight over here, like you do. And, and just like pun expect, expect it says, there's going to be trial and there's going to be error. It's kind of inevitable. And there, there's colors that you're going to find that work great for you. And there's colors you're going to find that are just uh, 
Oh, not so hot. You're going to look at those and say, oh, this thing just is terrible. And it could be different colors that work for you than work for somebody else. Now, see how we've got the darker colors in here? Yeah, that's going to bring out our... Now, right there, I'm painting over stuff that hasn't been touched in a long time. If I keep going at that same area over and over again, that's not going to work. It is not going to work. I'm going to see if I cannot get a bit of a reflected light here. Underside of it. There we go. All right, that's a little better. Hmm. Let's see what we can do. I want to get a darker pupil in the eye here. Now that we've got our lighter and darker version there. There. I'm going to shift this over so I don't hit the nose with the brush. Boom. There we go. And maybe even... I'm thinking of making that, as much as I like that, I might make that a little bit darker. That little glaze that I did over the over the eye. I'm going to go back to that basically alizarin crimson. This is where I'm going to use that transparency in my favor. I mean, hey, it's a transparent color. Let's use that transparency to our benefit. Oh, what have we got? Uh... Why two aces? Someone living in California, and that and the fires aren't fun. Uh, those skin tones, a purple green mix again. There is a. Actually, I was using that new yellow color. I don't think you got a chance to see that yet. So I will show you in just a second here. Doing my little bit of glaze there. Where is it? Ah, here it is. So this is one of the new Williamsburgs. It's this. And it was mixed with a little bit of the purple. I threw in some of this carmine color. Yeah, some of this crimson color. I threw in a little bit of that into the cheek here. We've been taking some of our teal color, mixing that in down here. Oh, actually, thanks for reminding me. We got to do this side too. <laughs> yeah, can't just not do that side. I gotta figure out is that uh, is that hair or is that I don't know something else. Uh, let's see, uh, fires, 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 bunch of fires. I'm gonna take some of my teal color here. Now I'm gonna actually have to moisten this up. Mm, or purple. Mm, boy, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna change. We will change to our violet color here. I'm glad I, glad I saw that. Yeah, that's better. We'll get that lighter, but now this is another case where I said just put this stuff here. Well, that's going to sit there for quite a while. And I mean quite a while. Next up, I'm going to take my indigo I'm going to mix that with some of my titanium white here. Let's see what I can do for maybe some highlights in the hair that maybe don't have that greenish tint to them. And maybe even make those a bit brighter. Yeah, okay, so we're going to start this off with our indigo here. And you notice they have no problem with these brush strokes because we haven't touched this paint here in a long time. If I had done this right after those glazes, remember those pin line glazes we did in here? All of this stuff is just going to, it's either going to make a mess or it's just going to wipe away what was already there. But instead, see how that covers? Now, if I'm going to go on top of that, if it's going to be light, it can't be that same level of thinness. It's got to be just physically thin.
thicker paint. Um, I'm again trying to carry this set of highlights here all the way along. Tire length over here. There we go. See that? Carries all the way along here. Gives me some highlights over here. We're also going to need to get some other highlight colors in there too. Can't just be that. Maybe some ochres back here. Maybe that burnt umber mixed with a bit of white. We're also going to have to do our armor back here too. Can't just be working on this one side. So we're going to take... Oh, we also used a little bit of Terra Rosa in the skin tone. That's what we're using again here. And we used some of that up there. Well, it's been a while since I... Well... I had a chance to do human skin tones. Now this is when I was working on last night. It's much smaller than that Gorgon slash Medusa. But that's where we're using. See we got some of the blue in there. We were trying out that yellow color on the, the skin tones on this one. So that was pretty fun. We were, we were messing around with that last night. Going to get me something to drink here. That's better. What about, and this is what I mean, do I do a, see the firelight can't really cast up here. I'm going to go with this sort of umber color here. We're going to hit it with our white. That'll cool it down. And I'm just going to use a little side swipe stroke here. Yeah. And just catch a couple of edges on that. Oh, look at where my hand is here. Look at how far back my hand is. I can't do this like this. That ain't gonna work. Hands off the metal. Hands away from that ferrule. They're touching that ferrule. It just won't... You won't be able to get that nice gentle brush stroke. That's, that's, I think, another reason, too, why people have the oils wipe away on them. Because they're, they've got a death grip on that brush, and they are just hammering away. They're not, they're not being very delicate with it whatsoever. Uh, let's see. Let's just focus in on the painting here. Do I want some as much as I like those lights on? Okay, yeah, I need to do the same thing here. If we're going to have a chain of highlights here, well, it better extend into this hair, especially if I want it to have any kind of that, that shininess to it. A little bit of this here. Oh, let's get some right on the edge of that. I think a couple of little edge highlights here. Ah, especially that. It'll, it'll throw this the, the stuff in her face. That's going to really make that recede. Good enough. What's going to happen here? This also... It needs reflected light of some kind. That It's literally, it's like one of those infinity things where the metal reflects on the metal and then the metal reflects back. I actually have to do that here. This is reflecting on this. This is reflecting on this. I kid you not. That that kind of happens with the metals. Just, just think of something that is constantly reflecting on everything. And... Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for you to kind of figure that out. There are just constant reflections everywhere. See how we got the teal reflecting here on, on this piece of her armor over there? Oh, let's go with that same teal again. Except I've got to thin it down a bit. That's it. 
So I'm just kind of scumbling away here. So again, it's reflecting. I, I got this teal right here. How can that not be reflecting on metal that's sitting right next to it? And over here, we've got a situation where we need to maybe reflect something that might be skin tone onto this metal. And that's another situation where I'm just going to have to turn on my lights to be able to see what the heck's going on with that. I am going to try and sneak a little bit of teal back there some more. Um, also, if I can, I'm going to try and get a little bit of teal onto our skin tone here. See that nice little reflection there? Possibly even here too. Notice we're putting some of that teal over here. If a color goes somewhere, what does it do? It goes everywhere. This bus is feeling like anime a bit. Uh, oh, uh, Warmonger. I do have a, a new video up on YouTube. Well, it's a, it was a Twitch session that I did. Oh, here she is. This was really different for me, and I used a bunch of different... This was with acrylics. I used a bunch of different colors. They were just Reaper colors I had sitting around. So actually, this is up on the YouTube channel right now. So there's a little bit of kind of an anime vibe for you there. Uh, now, this one was on the YouTube channel. This is uh, on the Patreon page here. This was done in oils, but this is uh, from that same line the succubus uh, publishing so another kind of an anime style figure there I'm going to take some of this teal again and I'm going to try and get ah there it is that's what I'm looking for a little bit of reflection there now this has been sitting there for how long I don't know half an hour let's see if the time is right so we got this this little blob right here. Let's blend the blob. And what are we doing? We're doing a little bit of a stipple approach here. Yeah, I actually, heck, I probably could have given that a couple of more hours to sit there, but it's it's blended out now. Again, using that stipple, using that stipple effect. Let's go. Back to our orange here. We're going to see if we can take some of this fluorescent orange and mix it with this, our full cadmiums here. If that's going to make it thick enough. Oh, what the heck. I'm going to use just a little bit of that, that permanent yellow whatever. I'm going to get some of my cadmium yellow deep in here. I need something that's really intense and even lighter. There we go. That's good. What about here? This shadow. Not so much a fire sort of a thing. Just a, I don't know, just a gold sort of a thing. Let's see what I can do stipple-wise here on this. And I'm just going to try and scumble this all. Instead of necessarily blending it, I'm just going to scumble this. Ah, look what's happening there. See that? Look at that. I'm going to go even lighter here. like up here that's what it's missing let's get some of our titanium in here i knew that was missing something uh let's see teal uh, let's see make a blob blend the blob uh i <laughs> i think uh, that should be i'm I, that should be a book of wampus <laughs> saying or either that or it should be a t-shirt. I don't know, man. But I'm I'm just kind of... That one I kind of like. I sort of like that one. You just don't want to be the blob. You can, you can place the blob, make a blob, blend the blob. 
and you got to wait you got to wait right you 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 make the blob you wait a minute and then you blend the blob sounds like some kind of well speaking of anime it sounds like kind of one of those bad horror movies or something Oh, let's get uh, some lighter highlights in there, too, and some more blends. We're going to blend some more in here. We have let this stuff just sit here for quite a while. So this yellow right over here, see that? That gets blended. We got a dark over here that gets blended. Now we need to get some kind of a... Reflected light over here. No, no, I don't want that to be orange. We'll let it be green. Yes, we'll let that be green. And that's going to go right in there. We already have our dark sitting here. We blend that out. So see, now we got a nice little turn that's going on there. We just didn't have much in the way of shape. Took a couple seconds to create some shape. And Al Capone has to take off to do the kiddos on the swing. I should be here. Now, I, like I said, as somewhere in the neighborhood of 10-ish, between 10 and 10.15, 10, I'm going to be taking that pause that refreshes. So if I've got the I'll be back screen, I will be back. Uh, Lady B's been using scumbling with my acrylics. Uh, here lives a happy little blob. Yes. Bob's happy little blob. I don't know. That oh, that that sounds... Uh, that could be taken the wrong way. Uh, become the blob dirty dragon. And Lady B says, I have another. Uh, to be the oil, you have to be the oil. That's uh, There's one... I could swear we just came up with one last night, and I do believe that our intrepid moderator sent me the text of that. And I think we we were able to come up with kind of one of those paradox sayings like you have there. Do we want this to be... I don't know. I'm just going to get that a little bit lighter here. And also on the... Uh, not the scabbard, on the hilt of that sword... Skin tone wise, just going to let a little bit of the white mix into that with what's already there. I think her hand looks a little more, got a little more delicacy going on. Now, shall we blend this? Because we got that crimson in there. And remember, we did a bunch of little transparent glazes sitting there. So I, I'm liking the fact that that's a little darker up there. Uh, it makes her have a little bit more of a rough and tumble look. A little less uh, dainty. Now, let's see if this sticks because we just made it a bit thinner. Ah, it sticks. Sure enough. And like I said, the these brushes here, the more you use these, the more they like it. Unlike a lot of your other sable brushes where you, if you use them and abuse them, they just kind of they just kind of cry and go into the corner. That is not really the case with these guys, which is really neat. Now, I'm going to try and find some something here in the range of my purples before I start hitting some lights on this. Alright, let's find out where that brush just flew off to. So a lot of the lights that we got over here, we need to get on the other side too. Where's my umber? So if I'm going to have the lighting here, I've got to have a shadow area here, but I also... Trying to carry my mid-tone as close as I can over to the other side here without losing that, that little bit of shadow that's going on. Again, metal over here. Just take some of this. It's a bunch of these little 
little brush strokes here that kind of give you some quick jolt of lighter colors. We're going to do that right about ooh, here. One here. Time to do a little bit of blending again. Like you do. We'll blend this. Take this and just scumble this right down. There we go. Nice little vertical. Not so much a highlight, more of a middle tone. What's going to happen back here? Let's get some lighter stuff. Uh, let's see. Her left should armor almost looks like a storm. Oh, shoulder armor almost looks like a stormy shoulder. Uh, stormy scene. Actually, look at this. There's a there's actually texture in here. Look at that. It there's little dots there, which is interesting given what you've got going on over here. Well, obviously, I think that's supposed to be maybe some waves. I'm just gonna guess maybe that's what we got going on over there. So here, let's find ourselves some lights. They're gonna have to be on the somewhat cooler side. I mean, yes, that the metal is gold, but if this is gonna be highlighted by more like a moonlight thing here. Well, I'm thinking some cooler highlights. Let's see if we can make that work. And you see where we're we're going after just these little these troughs here, these these dips and divots, making those lighter. Now this is a interesting little mix of that brighter yellow with our teal color. Do I want to get some? Yes, I'm gonna get some kind of light in here. And now we have to start bringing out some of the this wavy texture in the armor here. It does make her look somewhat tempestuous. That was something that I was thinking maybe that I could put onto the the cloth here as far as a freehand design potentially. Yeah, the, we're, we're carrying that green, that idea, that notion of the green right there. Oh, let me see. Steal a rebel. <laughs> it's free, it's funny. We're back here and we're we're doing our film noir because that has value. So speaking of that value, let's see what we can do here. All right, so you saw the, the color of those highlights. Let's see if we can create some highlights that have a little bit of a different color to them. And you can see on the palette what we're doing. We're taking that cadmium yellow medium, well, faux cadmium yellow medium. These highlights are cooler. Hopefully, these highlights are a whole bunch warmer. So steal it. Your your timing was impeccable, because this is the last film noir that we did over here on this particular piece. We are taking a little bit of that thinner to make it more, more of a flowing type of a color, or consistency, I should say. We're gonna get now the same same thing we were doing over here, but again, that was a cooler highlight. I can't emphasize how much warmer these highlights are. These are practically yellow. The other ones were practically just sort of a grayish blue. So we should have two very distinct color sides here. It's not necessarily that we're trying to reflect firelight on this side, but it is gold after all. And maybe the moonlight is not hitting. If we want this moonlight thing here, Still shouldn't be getting as much over here on this side, I think. So here, let's uh, get a bit of our reflected light too. Just because, yeah. 
and you can't it doesn't show up at all right it just doesn't it just is lighter or darker that's all it is now I am going to get a couple of uh, bright lights on here all right let's bring back our color now yes sir we film noir let's let's bring back our color let's see what we did there we go and you can see look at all the cooler colors there we turn this around look at that so those have more of a yellowish tint to them and now let's let's do some here so this is uh it's it's the cadmium green light but we're really gonna brighten the heck out of this it's almost gonna look like yellow at least on this side it is and it's also going to contrast well at least the idea is that it contrasts just a bit with the reddish color here ah there we go but it sort of looks yellow it's so green it's yellow there's a weird little catchphrase let's get a little reflected light here too So again, it's yes, it's green, but because it's such a warm green, and because that's such a cool version of the green, this is starting to look. It starts to look yellow. Doesn't look green necessarily. Here's that we got even more of that cadmium faux cadmium yellow in it. Let's see, we'll get a bit more of our reflected light right in here. These guys, I'm just going to kind of brush in some mid-tones here. There can't just be nothing but that dark. That's a little bit too dark right there. Although, I mean, there is a shadow being sort of cast by the hair, so we have to factor that in too. Who knows, might even have to tone down that highlight that's sitting over there because, well, shadow might just have to be a shadow sitting on there. You know, I can't tell where those wavy patterns are already on the miniature. Uh, these wavy things are here. That's, uh, that's sculpted in. So those things there are sculpted in. I'm going to try and maybe put some of those patterns in in some of these other areas myself. Yeah, we'll get uh, some cleanup on these guys here. We haven't really messed with this very much. Back into our white again. Because you also don't want your, your object source, lighting source, to be brighter than the the ambient light source I mean it's not always that's not something that's like a hundred percent hard and fast rule more of an in general type of thing it's best if it's not lighter than your overall light source maybe different if you're doing something like a diorama and you can actually see the light source and it kind of does make a little bit of sense then Let me see. I think we're all caught up on, on the chat. We'll get some lighter stuff going on. Metals here. Edges here. These little doodads here. Let's start to get some lighter stuff on these. These are never my favorite things. I think this is another reason why it's kind of with the 3d printing it's kind of fun because those well don't have mold lines running into them of any kind i see oh we've got some we got some more light to add in here too good grief how did that escape our attention and some more of these little wavy dudes here more so just thinking of them as reflected light so i'm going to catch a couple edges of those 
we get a couple edges on this too. Now I can either go dark down there or lighter. Purple, maybe not, maybe a lighter turquoise. I don't know, it may not work. Only one way to tell. I mean, it's not like we need a lot there. Just that little bit might be the, th the thing. Yep. Now back to this uh, crazy little brown that we made for the rest of this rope here, her little rope belt. Again, this is a Big Child Creatives bust. Painting this with her oils.